You guys have been asking for and I've been wanting to test it. So here is my comparison between the 8700K and the 1800X. Now, as usual from the videos that you may have seen in the past comparing the 1800X to the 7700K and to various other Ryzen processors and to the 7820X as well, this one is gonna be mostly focusing on CSGO, GTA 5, and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds because they are three of the top most played games in the uh, world at the moment. And they're also games that I have access to, I can actually play to some degree uh, and are able to test repeatedly. Now this video is entirely focused on the 8700K and the 1800X, so if you'd like to see any other chips or games tested, uh, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try and get my, uh, you know, do my best to get my hands on either the game or the chip to also actually test them. And just before we jump into the results, I want to make it clear that any testing that you see here is actually slightly different to the testing that I did for the previous videos, where this is a complete worst case scenario for the CPUs, where you're using the uh, H.264 encoder on the CPU you uh, with the very fast preset and also uh, separately re-encoding with H.264 for the local recording uh, and that one is on the indistinguishable quality settings so really kind of worst case scenario where you really want the best quality possible for both your local recording and to go streaming as well it's also 6,000 mega uh, kilobits per second and a 60 FPS 1080p stream so hopefully this is as you can see the worst case scenario and it really does kind of bring out the uh, the best and the worst of both of the chips. So with that said, let's take a look at the graphs for the performance in both standard and streaming, the difference and the percentage differences as well. Starting off with CSGO, the biggest thing you'll notice here is the massive difference between the 1800X and the 8700K on the normal benchmarks. The performance difference lost anyway, at least in terms of percentages, isn't too big of a gap. Although when you're talking about you know losing 40% of your FPS, that is fairly significant. Although the difference between the 8700K and the 1800X here, I just don't know if you'd really notice the difference between 240 and 290 FPS, even on just normal settings and, you know, not streaming. When it comes to GTA 5, the real uh, kind of story for this one is something that I'll cover in a second about the frame times and the actual playability of the game, but especially on the normal average benchmarks, you do see a fairly significant difference, although when it comes to the actual percentage loss while streaming, they're almost identical here, losing, you know, 40-ish percent each, uh, both on the minimums, maximums, and average, so uh, something to, to bear in mind. When it comes to player unknowns battlegrounds, the numbers here are again almost identical both in terms of the performance loss and actually in terms of the just general performance. On the normal numbers you're looking at about a 10 FPS difference and while streaming you're only really looking at about a 7 FPS difference so you're not actually losing that much. It does seem like uh, battlegrounds is a more GPU heavy uh, you know, game so that's not too much of an issue but it's something to, to bear in mind if you are planning on streaming some nice pub. And of course this trend carries on for the maximums too. Now what really surprised me here is how well the 87 700K did considering it's two less cores, but I also do want to make it clear that these numbers that you just saw aren't necessarily the entire picture. Especially for GTA 5, there is a considerable difference in the playing experience, and despite the fact that the 8700K you were seeing a good you know, 60 plus FPS even while streaming, whereas the Ryzen chip was a little bit lower than 60, the actual playing experience was significantly different. Here's the graph for the 1800X, and as you can see from the, the these are just the frame times, so this is how long each uh, frame took to render. So if you can see here, it's a fairly fairly standard graph. There's a few spikes, uh, nothing more than about 120 milliseconds, which is still very high for a frame, but it's not you know a full second or anything crazy. Whereas here is the graph for the 8700K. As you can see, it's a much more volatile graph. As you can see, the overall baseline is a lot smaller down the bottom, whereas you have way more significant spikes and you know a much higher uh, sort of amplitude of the spikes and they're running up 250 milliseconds on some of those so it's kind of a, a crazy difference 8700k was almost unplayable while streaming with GTA 5 even though you do have that higher FPS. So the CSGO results are undisputable the 8700k is much better playing CSGO and much better, better streaming it as well at least with these settings anyway with uh, GTA 5 as I said the overall playing experience even though the FPS was lower was much better on the Ryzen setup and with PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds the numbers are very very close here you're basically looking at a tie between the two and while the 8700K is a tiny bit faster on both average and 
uh, while streaming it is still basically at a tie you won't notice that sort of a difference so I'm really impressed with the overall uh, I guess setup here and the overall performance that both of the chips had and for me what's really awesome is that you now actually have competition it's not just a case of well you need one chip for gaming and one chip if you're gaming and streaming because both of these chips do a fantastic job of both now sure if you want the best FPS possible then the Intel chip is still the way to go if however you are more of a content creator and you're really only playing games so that you can stream them and stuff like that then the Ryzen chip might actually be a better shout for you especially if you do a lot of editing after the fact as well where you will still have a similar amount of power if not a little bit more power in video editing applications for you know your after uh, after hours editing um, but otherwise it is still really nice as I said just have competition to be able to pick either of these chips and be genuinely happy with the experience of them so for me I'm just you know really happy so there you have it that's my thoughts that's the results and that's pretty much it if you've got any thoughts on the video on the tests or on the chips themselves let me know in the comments down below I'd love to have a conversation with you about them so as I said feel free to leave a comment down there also if you want to check out the price for these chips or uh, you know when and where you watch this take a look at the links in the description down below and also if you're planning on uh, well just watching these videos regularly feel free to subscribe it also help massively if you use the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links in the description down below they do genuinely help me out and they support, they support me making these videos on a Monday Wednesday and Friday basis so if you could use those that'd be fantastic there's also some other ways to support me in the description down below if you do want to keep seeing these videos coming there will be some other uh, other ones over there for you and otherwise that's pretty much it I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video